I might go either way. I mean, Albad have definitely proven that they can do very, very well in this kind of matchup. Yeah, it looks like uh, our bad was a bit startled to see that the ra the map is already going through. But either way, we'll get on into the operator bands. First one off the board from our bad is going to be Blackbeard. No surprise there. He's a very strong operator on attacking the console office windows and hiding uh, all the way deep in gar uh, the garage entrance. When attacking garage nomad off the board coming out from Sonic. So are you a bit surprised coming out from these picks? No, I mean, this is kind of um, what we were thinking about, right? Like, we were thinking about Blabbit's pretty strong on this map. Thinking about Nomad's pretty strong overall, and she's normally going to get banned out quite a lot. The Echo Ban makes a lot of sense here as well. I'll be kind of surprised if there's a Mirror Ban here, but I think Arbad probably will gravitate towards the Mirror Ban, just because of how Sonic's played this in the past. And there we go, yeah, the Mirror Ban is going to go down. So, yeah, I think these are pretty standard bans, honestly. And yeah, not too surprising, Mira is pretty much an instant ban coming out on this map, uh, although she wasn't last game with Disrupt and Organized Chaos. But that'll leave us moving on into the pick phase. And the first bomb site that it looks like we're going to be going to will be upstairs in the console office and projector room with our bat on defense. Yeah, should be interesting indeed. We're going to see console office and meeting room defense to start with. Um, should be reminded the last time we saw Sonics go here onto this map, we saw them go Teller's Archives for their first defense. We did talk about a little bit about that um, during the last game, but I honestly wouldn't be too surprised if Sonics brought that up here as well. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, so, as for the operator lineups, it's not too different that from what our bad has been running. Uh, we see a Thermite coming off from Goddess. I think they might have been expecting downstairs to be a garage defense, but they're upstairs inside a console office. Um, Thermite isn't too bad of a pick upstairs, but Hibana is a lot more of a safer pick, at least when you're trying to attack the long desk portion of the map. Yeah, I mean, I still don't know about the Thermite here, honestly. Like, I get that Thermite is good for that downstairs defense, and maybe Sonics are going into this thinking that it should be downstairs, but I mean, this basically forces them to go for a constant take, which isn't bad, mind you. I mean, they do have the Capital, but if like the Capital gets picked early on, which is definitely possible, um, that kind of all falls through very, very quickly, and now you can't. Like, if they had a Habana in this lineup, they could go either way, right? Maybe it's just the fact that this is how Sonics want to play this map, and they just want to play it as. Oh, we can take this line up at every single site. Flashbangs are already going down into yellow, though, from Euphoria. Onto Euphoria. Euphoria will retreat away into the bathroom, and because of the Maestro from Cali utilizing that Bailiff to open up holes to watch yellow, this could be a pretty nasty surprise if Sonics don't drone up the yellow stairs and spot up those holes. Already coming to a close in the first minute, not a whole lot of action here besides some flashbangs coming in through the yellow stairs windows. Yeah, I think that's more just to clear the ADSs though, and uh, just to make sure there is no ADS there. But there is one ADS in the bathroom, which will be Euphoria who's playing around that area. Kali's still holding down onto the yellow stairs there. Everyone's just kind of chilling at the moment. This is actually a pretty good setup from Euphoria. He has a really strong position that he can play, and no one can really need him out of this either, because they just wasted a huge amount of flashbang just clearing out the yellow. So Euphoria is actually playing in a really strong position right now, and. As long as he doesn't get picked by just over peeking, he can hold the yellow stairs for basically the entire round. If they're gonna go for a console push, you need this um, this yellow stairs control, which is why this will like, send Neptune's below. And Neptune's opening up beneath inside a bathroom. Down to 42 at 25 HP, and hope we get finished off by God is repelling outside of the console office window. So, right as you were saying that he can hold downstairs inside a bathroom. That's quickly shut down and coming out from a very great awareness coming out from Sonics. Yeah, very great awareness coming out from them indeed, as Goddess could be droning out where she can and just pinging out the map show who's in the connector, but Kali is going to win that fight against Ghost. He goes down like a sack of potatoes. 
And the drones are going to go out further from Gunners to try and get some security and what they can do here. It looks like the execute is going to come down. The crossbow bolts go down. Super picks the kill onto Kaolin. He moves all the way in and goes to the plant. The Maestro Cam is still there, however. We should see a Nitro come out from Tuffy from below. And he is going to go down, but no! The plant is going to get denied. Super picks up Carnage, however. Tuffy has used his Nitro. And Avian has to get in here and pick up the Diffuser. He's going to do so, but the Maestro Cam constantly spotting him out still. They're unable to deal with it just yet, as Avian is alone in the site. Tuffy, however, is going to take down Neptunes. He's going to leave Super to try and clear this downstairs area. He's going to be able to do so effectively, but there's going to be no one playing there. Tuffy's moved onto the yellow stairs, and Super's going to have to try and get the frag. 10 seconds left to go on the club, and there we go. Super does take down Super. So, sorry, Tuffy. And it's going to be all down to Beasley to try and clutch it out. 1v2, the Diffuser does not get denied. Super can't catch him on the flank. And oh no, our bad will take round number one by denying the plant going down and by time. What mistiming by Super. If he missed that shot, you can't miss that shot. I mean, if you're holding the cross in that situation, that is really bad on Sefton. A really unfortunate timing coming out from Super. I think if he reacted just a little bit earlier, he manages to land the frag onto beastly rotating through but beastly being the quicker man in that situation is able to land the injury onto avian and sacri and give the round in favor of our bad very well done by our bad i mean they had everything they needed for planted now they had the maestro cam up until the very late rounds they had a pull still downstairs who yeah by the way right so there's a book who went downstairs net with clearing that whole thing out where was Tuffy during that whole situation where Euphoria was getting picked? Was he just hiding? Was that the strat to not engage the book and just let him do his thing? I I don't know, but if that book had died and had to contest the pulse down there, it kind of seemed like he wouldn't be able to get away with that and Euphoria would have held that really powerful angle for a lot longer. Yeah, unfortunate that Tuffy wasn't able to uh, rotate around and pick off Nep. It could have been that's just the strategy, you know, if Euphoria dies upstairs, he has the stim shots to heal himself up. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to utilize those to give himself more health. Ended up resulting in his death coming out from Goddess, getting the opening pick. But overall, a very good adaptation coming out from Beastly and from, I think it was, yeah, it was Tuffy. Beastly and Tuffy in the 2v4 situation, if I'm not mistaken. And yep. they're able to swing, to hang, to tough it out and went out that round yeah and they did very very well in indeed with that we move through into round number two it is going to be a lobby and press room defense coming out but our bad looking pretty good so far actually um which is kind of a surprise but i mean this is kind of defender side i don't want to say like during a couple seasons ago consulate was a very 50 50 map i think it's still very much the same if very very slightly into the favor of defenders but i mean just a 1-0 i mean they did well but you gotta admit it did come down to the time and it came down to the fact that super couldn't get the kill otherwise they would have won the round yeah uh lobby's gonna be the second bomb site to be defended out here beastly getting lit up very much i think it was from ghost on the visa stairs Goes to one of the more breakout players. The C4 gets tossed out, won't find anything. And within the first minute, Beastly gets trapped into a corner like a stray dog. And this is looking really bad for Beastly. All he really just has to do is just try to burn as much time as he can. Yeah, Ghost could be holding down, but what a shot from Ghost. Kali goes down, but Ghost with the 2k. Beastly's out of it. And now it's a 3v, sorry, 5v2 there. A super does save his teammate. So if he goes down, that super is going to revive Ghost. It's now a 5v2. This is looking insanely good for Sonic to try and take control as the rotates are going to come out from Carnage and Euphoria. Back down to the site. They go. And the execute should start to come down. Goddess is ready to go for that plant as Avian's going to try and put down some ooh, covering fire. But Carnage is going to take out Goddess before she can really do anything about it. And they have to get this trade as quickly as possible. But no trade has gone through just yet for sonics as they move through desperately to get control of the diffuser again still full utility available for avian however as he recovers the diffuser and they try and get control where they can they go for the smokes out onto anti-chamber super picks up carnage it's now all down to euphoria in a 4v1 what? they see him euphoria from the benches takes down neptunes but the plant should start to come down it will do so from avian just get successfully planted a 3v1 in a post plant this is not good for euphoria in any way whatsoever but there's still potential for him to clutch this out. Ghost is going to retreat all the way back. 
I'm just going to take these very, very slim angles and not want to contest this whatsoever. That Alder is terrifying in this situation. As you are going to try and move through on the anti-chamber, see what he can do here. But Ghost just being leaning right, right into this wall, right up curled. And sweep it up above to try and cover the diffuser as well. You forage just go for the peak, but no avian will take him down. Sonic takes round number two, a much much better attack from them. Super boasting five frags and no deaths. Really breakout start coming out right now for Super, and that was a pretty decent, a really good round coming out from Sonics, and a bit really poor played out coming out from our bad. I really think that whoever was playing deep inside of console office shouldn't have gone for the peak to try to help out Beastly. In my opinion, I think Beastly should have just been there to just l let him die and then have whoever's in console office just kind of play it out, play for time, let Beastly die. And I think that would have gone in favor of our bad had that happened. Yeah, there's been a lot of very, very close rounds, by like very small marginal mistakes. It's not being very, very one side or the other. There's been a lot of patient play from Arbad, and then to go around to the second round and completely play way overly aggressive is interesting. But we're going to move into round number three. We see a lobby press room defense coming out here from Arbad yet again. What needs to happen differently here? I think they had a pretty decent setup upstairs for the time being. I think it was Cali playing deep inside of console office, trying to go for a peek try to help out Beastly like I was mentioning a few seconds ago. In my opinion, I think if Kali lets Beastly die upstairs, just let it happen. Because I don't even think Sonics had droned out console office, so they still need to gather that information and Kali can play that time very well. He can either rotate on through yellow or make a drop down into the into the bomb site below inside a piano and try to go for a late flank dropping down beneath into the garage. Yeah, I, that late rotate, um, kind of like through the garage, could be is it's like an interesting one to do. But you see it come out here and now. But like those things tend to get like play mode anyway. So we'll we'll see what goes down. Yeah, for some wow. reason, claymores this patch don't really have a whole lot of sound when they're getting shot. So it pretty much just comes down to whether or not if you have a suppressor on your secondary. Maybe, but could be. <laughs> Tuffy in a uh, pretty powerful position here on the pulse, as uh, just pulsing out all these kids on their drones these days, all with their computer games. It's terrible. Yeah, but there we go. Although... Goddess will rotate all the way through into admin. They take quite a lot of control upstairs as well. Uh, Super could be drawing the drone. Still, there is still Tuffy below. However, it looks like Super's going to try and bait out Nitro. However, but I'm not going to hit down just yet. Though my charge is going to go down, that is going to open up. I'm kind of surprised they are going for an admin side take, considering they do have that thermite. They have managed to open up onto the top of the visa stairs, however, and that has given them control that they need, but not the kill that they need. Now, droning out Spade, uh, not Spades, I'm thinking the last game. <laughs> droning out Tuffy downstairs, that gives them the information that they know that they can't really go for a plant until they either take out the pulse or have someone just uh, occupying. But either way, Avian's going to get the first frag for. Sonics and a really aggressive run out coming out from Cali, but unfortunately he's not going to be able to find the trade just yet. But last minute 15 coming up. Sonics has a lot of time to work with with a lot of mouth control that they already have. Yeah, frag grenades are going to come out of course across the board from Sonics, but they basically have that upstairs control now, and they can start to work with it. Which is still about one minute left to go on the clock. This much more aggressive upstairs hole seems to work out quite well for them in terms of manpower. But timing-wise, they're starting to run out. Looks like Kali is going to be prepping that jump out onto Piano. Um, Unlucky. Looks like we've had an Observer bug here. Yeah, mute bug. That is unfortunate. <laughs> Super going to get a double kill there. Oh, as Tuffy yeah. launches that Nitro out, I'm sure it was a very impressive Nitro here. <clears throat> as it's like lots of peaks are going to come through. Goddess going to try and plant the Diffuser down. And it's now a 3v2 situation. Euphoria somehow going to pick Goddess, but I'm sure it was very impressive. As you see... 30 seconds left to go on the clock, the reset still has not been planted down. <laughs> and there's still a lot of utility left with Avian here, but Super is going to 
almost get picked here. Son of Silver of HP is all down to Euphoria in a 3v1. Avian going to try and pull in Diffuser. Euphoria takes down Super. It's now a 2v1. Diffuser is going to be going down as quickly as it can. Avian still planting around, but instantly traded out. But the Pleaser does go down. It's all down to Ghost in a 1v1. A clutch situation to see what can happen. This is not looking too good at all. But Ghost in a very, very good situation to try and do it. It's going to be opening up the rotate from above, it looks like, to try and hold the diffuser down. Euphoria going to go for the counter diffuse, but Ghost should be able to get an angle here. Just goes for the pre fire. Euphoria comes off of it. He's on a slur of HP and a dream to try and make it happen. The diffuser slowly doing its work as well as Euphoria going to move all the way through and see what he can do around this press room area. Going to rotate all the way up spiral, it looks like, as. Ghost still holding down above, and Euphoria it looks like it won't really have enough time either way, even if he does get the pick. Euphoria pushes all the way down again, goes for the defuse, but no, Ghost takes him down. Sonics take round number three uh, in a very confusing round. Yeah, I'm not exactly too sure what happened. I think the bug rotating from the drone that got jammed to transitioning over. Let's just hope that it doesn't transfer into the next round. <laughs> Uh, but either way, a impressive round coming out from Euphoria. Unfortunately, not able to find the third and final kill that he needed onto Ghost. Considering that we could uh, somewhat see. But either way, Sonics wins two rounds in a row. And the fourth bomb site will now be played back upstairs inside a console office. Yeah, I mean, uh, we didn't quite get to see what happened there, but... Sonic seem to do their same take every single time, and a capital take can be pretty powerful in consulate. Like the smokes come through, you can't affect it with ADSs, he can block off pretty much every single sideline, and then he can block off your ability to retake. That whole situation has gone pretty well so far for Sonics. Um, pretty much every single time they've gone for like a capital take, they've at least been able to get the fuser down. Or, well, almost get the fuser down. Yeah. So fortunately, we don't have to have a rehost on the production side of things, given that the mute bug was fixed this next round. So that's good news on our side. <laughs> but right now, Sonic's looking pretty strong, and uh, I'm wondering if we could just see the scoreboard real quick. Uh, wow, super with eight frags. Yeah, but he's playing Ash. Don't think of his ego. <laughs> I mean, eight frags against any team, especially I mean, also, a Challenge League team. Think about it this way. He got three frags, and they lost the round because he didn't hit his shot on the last guy. So, think about it like that. It really yeah. all of a sudden doesn't look so impressive. But, you know, you are right. <laughs> uh, eight for one. Super doing very well for himself on the Ash roll. I'm kind of surprised that Super's even playing Ash here, but he has been doing so recently. So, I don't, it doesn't really strike me as an Ash play. I mean... Ghost is kind of normally the entry here, and Super's acting like a second entry Ash, which is kind of weird, but like having a double soft breach is actually not bad on um, on a console. Yeah, well, when we, when, when we saw Ghost play on E Yang and Rise, ooh, Tuffy could go for a frag here if he spots it out. Maybe, just maybe, Shotgun's gonna come through. Very easy frag onto Super. That'll be his, six, his second death. And a very great coordination coming out from our bad. Yeah, I love this uh, this like coordination between the pulse and other people. It's been happening so much in consulate. Uh, yeah, I just you love to see it, you know. And Tuffy's gonna rotate the wind downstairs and like playing your pulse in such a powerful position downstairs. It not only normally just forces a roam clear, which Sonic's really ought to be doing anyway. I mean, the last time they allowed a pulse to play down here, they allowed them to deny the plant and basically win the round for them. So. Scary. Sonic's yeah. really not looking too good here. Yeah, Super getting fragged off very early on in the first half. That does not look good for SQ, but, you know, all five members have been known to frag out, but Euphoria taking a ton of damage from a nade coming out from Neptunes. Cal is going to get the frag onto Ghost, but Neptunes with a very easy frag through the floorboards onto Tuffy, shuts down the pulse, and just like that, Sonic's trying to decrease their... Odds from a five from a three v five into a four v three. Yeah, Neptune's is just doing work today on the book. He's managed to even the score without just a little bit here by eliminating Tuffy, but it is still a four v three situation. Still holding down as he moves up onto the yellow stairs, but right next to him is opened up. No one's gonna be holding, but Euphoria is gonna wide peek out. Neptune's goes down, 
And this is all of a sudden looking really, really good for our bat. They still have Avian and Goddess, however, up on the board. And we still have full utility up for the bird to try and do some work here. And Goddess sees the barrel. Oh, my God. The barrel of the Alder from Kali to try and eliminate her. She will know where to peek and she will know where to aim. As just everyone from Arbat is absolutely stacked up, ready for this utility to start going down. Avian should Ooh. get into position. Oh my god, Goddess with amazing shot. Euphoria is out of it. Kali is down as well. And that was a 2v2 situation. Carnage holding on where he can. He hears the repels into the bathroom here. But tries to weep Ikea. Ooh, there we go. Avian just go down. It's all down to Goddess. So 1v2 plus situation. Smokes are going to go out. Goddess lost alone. She has to go for the kills. She has to do something. So we push up onto yellow. Goes with a bit of push, but no Kali shuts it down. Oh, bad take round number four. Almost an insane round coming out. A very great round coming out from SQ, but you know they managed to take a 2v4 down to a 2v2. Goddess with an absolutely insane one tap coming onto Euphoria deep inside a bathroom. That was an absolutely nutty shot to say that, to say the least. But I'm not exactly too sure why Goddess got off repel. I think maybe because she knew she was going to get fragged by Carnage sitting inside uh, the, well, the I mean, connecting office. I think it's office. more just like if you repel in there and people are holding connector, you're dead, right? There's yeah. no other way around it. So maybe it was just a call that was made to just try and get control of the bathroom and go for a yellow push instead, which you know is kind of fair because you need yellow control if you're going to go for a console push anyway. Uh, they even scored out into a two v two from the repel, so I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with the decision. But like, here's what I'm thinking: in the first place, she shouldn't have to get a repel because so many people should not be dead at that point. Yeah. So. It's now an even scoreboard now with Arbad winning out their second round. And honestly, in this matchup, they look absolutely more prepared and more like an actual team compared to how they were looking against Elevate. Um, uh, maybe, but like what we saw from Arbad on Elevate was them with some pretty oppressive attacks. And then in the second half, it was just completely falling apart for them. So maybe going forward it'll just be messed up. Yeah. Not sure. Yeah. But you know, so far in this matchup, a lot of people would have favored Sonics to be maybe I mean this is a bit of a stretch here, but maybe a lot of people would have seen Sonics at a 4-0 lead. But so far our bad has taken the advantages that have been given to them and they've been able to capitalize on it very well against Sonics. Yeah, they've done so very well indeed. We'll see how it does go through as moving to round number five. Drones are going to go ahead of them. As we'll see exactly how Sonics want to take this round. But so far, their kind of capital has been the big crux of this. And I think, you know, that's not bad, honestly, because I kind of mentioned the weakness of this is if your capital goes down early, you're kind of lost for ideas. But the capital has never been picked early, before, at least before deploying his utility anyway. He's always no. done something useful. Yeah. Ghost getting the opening frag onto Tuffy, shutting down Legion. That's really big, considering one, it's Legion, and it's in the it's in the first minute of the round, and Legion really, really shines when as the round progresses. So a huge impact frag coming out from Ghost. Yeah. Well, Kali going to be holding down onto the spiral where he can, but already the Legion off the board, and as you said. It's a big impact frag, not only because it's a Legion, but because the the Legion has impacts. <laughs> Yeah, I see, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, so Sonic's already sitting pretty now in a 5v4 with a minute 20 left to go. Super is going to be droning around Visa, spotting out the vigil that's going to be with Kali. But Kali will actually be situated inside of Archives. And where Super's drone is currently located is over on the top of Visa's stairs. So that could be some misleading information to come out for Sonic's. Yeah, that definitely could be. So Kali's actually playing in a really powerful position right now, not only because you've got the cross down as a spiral, so they know they don't have to worry about any of their behind flank, but he, yeah, he's also kind of tricking out any of that going down. So it is a 4v5. It's not looking ideal for Arbad, but they still have a lot of control and they still have a lot of utility available. But the thing is, you don't have any nitros available, so you don't have any like way of actually killing the planter, you know, because you don't have an echo because there is no echo available. 
So, like, a plant is very, very valuable for Sonics right here. And you can see they are getting ready to set up for their plant here. As more smokes are going to go down. But Kali picks up Ghost on the flank. But even instantly trades it back. And he's getting ready to go for the execute. There we go. Smokes are going to go down. But no, he goes down. But not before he deploys his utility. And the Fuser will start going down from Guns. Kali is going to try and duel it out with Super. But unable to get the kill just yet. Super on the Ash. Who's all the way through. But no, Super. What are you doing? Who's all the way through? Kali's chasing down. Diffuser goes down, but it's now a 2v1. Neptune's from above will pick up Euphoria. It's all down to Carnage in a 1v2 situation to see if he can bring it in. Diffuser slowly ticking away and doing its thing as Neptune still has vertical control. Carnage knows that Neptune's is above, so he's got to try and contest this somehow. But also Goddess, way far out, is going to be having control of the Diffuser as well. She's got a very, very good position and a power powerful one at that. Carnage looks like to try and rotate up yellow to try and get this pick, but he's running out of time. Goes for the pre-fires, and Neptune's going to be aware of the rotates coming through, and there we go. Neptune's picks him up. Sonic 6, round up a 5. Very good job from them. And again, Avian is just doing his job. Even if he dies, he's still picking up people on the flank, and he's still putting his utility down every single round. He's never died with full utility up. Very true. Avian absolutely utilizing the utility to the max that he can. Taking another look at the scoreboard right now, Euphoria still top fragging on support with six frags to his name. Meanwhile, Super hasn't found anything lately in the past two rounds, still sitting at eight. It's kind of cooled down a little bit now. Meanwhile, Avian and Ghost have four frags to their name as well as Neptunes. Whatever on the R bad side of things, it's just Tuffy and Carnage with four, Kali with three, Beastly with zero. Although he is on smoke, he's playing support. Yeah, and super... he's managed to... Sorry, you go. Complete your Complete. I was going to say that every round that Beastly has died, it looks... Or that's every single round that Sonics has won. That is a very good point. So, going forward as well, I just want to also point out that Super's still lifting up his past glory of getting eight kills. And he's not found to go kill the past two rounds, even though he had a clear duel with the Jaeger of Carnage. Just want to point that out real quick. Um, as we move into round number six, the final defense here for Albad. If Sonics can take this round, which honestly looking like they might do, I mean, finally we're seeing the Habana, but we're seeing another downstairs defense, and I can't help but feel this is Sonics expecting a downstairs, uh, sorry, an upstairs hold. But it also might mean that they know how to attack this deep downstairs with a Habana, and might just go for a full room clear and take the hatches instead. Our bad. Um, I, mean, I know I said it earlier, but throughout this matchup, they look like they're actually playing more cohesive, more like together, actually trying to utilize teamwork. And they're not looking as lost as they were the past three matches that they've played. And it's a really big boost to their confidence uh, in my confidence in them right now. Confidence wins games. It, that is definitely true. And uh, I mean, Albad have done very well to get a couple of runs on the board here, but. Sonics are definitely proving the better team at the moment. If I'm coming away with three attacks on Concha, I pretty much expect that. But with four attacks, I'd be pretty happy with that one. These Sonics are starting to do their work upstairs here to try and open up all the rotates above and all the sight lines where they can. And yeah, this looks like a pretty standard from what I was expecting. Them just doing like a full roam clear upstairs and just slowly working their way down. The big danger of this, of course, is there's three staircases. And there's one of them. Ghosts can't land so many shots. But there we go. Tuffy is so low in HP. But Super is going to pick Kali. And Neptune's picks up Tuffy on the rotate. That's now a 5v3. Great from Neptune. So he actually opened up the vertical play and watched the bottom of Yellow Stairs to catch him up on the rotate. Neptune's is probably the, one of the smartest book players in this game. That's crazy. Really good map knowledge coming out from Nap. And really saving Sonics's butts. It, I, I honestly don't. I didn't even know that you could actually make a angle from there. But then again, it also just comes down to practice and learning how the map works. So really great jobs coming out from Sonics, being able to utilize that angle, and that gives Nep a lot of room to work with on the piano floor. It does give him a lot of wood. And yeah, anytime that Neptune's has had this really powerful vertical control, he's just been destroying people on book. And yeah, he's just doing very, very well with it today. Khan is still playing around onto that backside area in the archives area, but it's a 3v5, and there's still so much utility up for the attackers right now to try and get inside and go for that plant. The Habana holes has been made in the garage, and that should be that Avian can 
go in his position in yellow yet again and go for his take. Super again, however, is going to lose that gunfight and he's going to go down on that backside tape. It's not going to matter too much because, of course, your Ash isn't that important. BC holding down. Smokes are going to go out, but God is going to plant the diffuser down anyway. The rotate is getting covered from above by Neptune. This Khan's going to have to re back into the site, but no. Avian with the double kill moves all the way in here. It's all, all down to BC, but no. Avian with the 3k picks it all up from Yellow Stairs. And Sonic take round number six, and they move to a 4 2 scoreline as they move onto their first defense on Conscience. I don't know if you saw the angle that Neptune's was using, but where he was positioned, he was able to watch the rotate coming from Cafeteria over into Garage that would be on the right side of White Van. Yeah, now, I mean, Neptunes has just had so many great plays with Book. I'm wondering if he's going to be able to pull off the same things on defense. But although I say that, the last time that I saw these guys on Contra, Neptunes is just flying out of windows. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I guess we'll see that. Yeah, against Vicious. Yeah, last week. So maybe we'll see something very interesting from Net. But so far, he's definitely deserved that place as one of the top fraggers on Sonics, which honestly is to me a little bit surprising. Um, just considering how, like, I look at Neptunes and I don't really think of, like, a really heavy fragger role, but he's been really racking him up. Yeah, Neptunes in the past would normally play supportive roles, be it hard breach or secondary support, sometimes even, uh, or, or even on the defense, I think he would be also playing anchor, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, people in chat can correct me if I'm wrong, but when Neptunes was at least playing in Pro League under, uh, what's known now as Rise when he was on Mouse, he was normally playing on the on the hard breach role, be it Hibana or Thermite, but I think being on Thonics, it they allow him to utilize more of his potential. And Super and Goddess have realized that you know he's absolute he can be really dangerous if if the chance arises. And he's really been proving his worth on, on those uh, chance, secondary entry roles. The the chance arise. Chance is. arise, yeah. It's been a long night. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving into round number seven now. It's with the first defense coming out from Sonics and see exactly how they're gonna bring this in. No rotate into security? Maybe they'll make it in, in a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's a bit interesting that there's no rotate into security. This might honestly be the play. I'm not sure. Like, I'm trying to think about why he wouldn't do this, but it might actually not be that bad if he doesn't do it in the end. But there we go. We are going to see an upstairs hold. Um, I was talking about this kind of like mute playing in the bathroom. We saw the same thing during the last game as well, is that we saw OC do it a little bit as well. And it, as I said, it's one of those strategies that's been around for a while, but there we go. Thank you, Mr. Observer. The rotate is getting over the <laughs> security finally, so we can go to sleep happy. Yeah. Pretty sure Sonic's like to go to bed soon. It's already 12.10 over there on, on the East Coast. <laughs> Well, it's 4 a.m. Uh, here, and I'm still going strong, so. <laughs> yeah. Either way, this will be the first attack round coming out from our bad. And they're bringing both the Buck and Sledge, so should any, should one of the soft creatures die, they'll still have one more to work with. But this is going to be a duo roam coming out from both Super and Nep. Swinging beneath uh, through anti-chamber, but Neptune's going to land in the first opening frag onto Kali. Kali and, normally and doesn't miss his shots. But Im immediately you've seen the difference here. Like, Kali is entering as the Capitao, and he's dying. He's losing that gunfight, and now they have no Capitao usage. They have no smokes. They have no late game push. They do have four grenades still on the table, but they're losing so many early fights here. Euphoria has gone down almost immediately there. He's going to be able to withstand, but Tuffy has taken a few shots himself. And oh, there we go. <laughs> Tuffy picks up their tunes, BC picks up Avian on a return, but Avian will shut down Euphoria. And this is just an amazing amount of fragging power coming out from Sonics right now. But Super gonna go down in the bench is there, Tuffy takes him down, easy as that, and now it's a 2v3. So they have gained the man advantage, but they don't have a huge amount of utility left remaining. Frag grenades are gonna go out into the site, however, to try and push out anyone who they can. As Goddess takes her situation up. And sees exactly what's going on. Has powerful Maestro cams in position still. We only have 40 seconds left to go on the clock. Got her still holding down where she can. And as Ghost looking very desperately onto Yellow. Begging someone. Peek me. Peek me. Come on. Do it. Peek me. But it's not going to happen. Unfortunately. <laughs> I really yeah. thought I could time it. You know. Yeah. I, actually, Tuffy might actually try and contest this now. So, yeah. You might actually see someone finally peek Ghost. And there we go. He's going to go down. Great shot from Tuffy. 
as it's going to be a 1v3. All down to go Goddess, as she's going to be going for the prone angle to try and deny this Diffuser going down. But the Diffuser is going to start going down from Beastly regardless as she pushes all the way up. But no, it's not going to happen. Carnage is going to take her down and Arbad will take their very first attack. I think this also might be the first game for Arbat where they've won, managed to win three rounds in a match, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, a great round coming out from Tuffy picking, I think that was a 3k that he had. Picked off Super. Uh, was it a 3k? I think yeah. it was a 3k, right? Yeah. Uh, picking up the second frag onto Super from top from the middle of Yellow Stairs and then just an absolutely insane wallbang onto Ghost sitting inside a cafeteria. Absolutely great performance coming out from Tuffy. Yeah, great performance indeed. And we're going to be moving through into round number eight. This is still looking pretty even across the board. We are seeing the Thatcher coming out from Carnage as we'll go to a split site. So, I mean, we've seen this before from Sonics. I'm pretty sure this is the only team we ever see in Challenge League, well, in NA Challenge League, who actually go to the split site. So let's talk about this a little bit. What do you think of this site? This site, I think it comes down to team to it favors teams that have practiced it more obviously uh we've seen sonics run this before i think it was against uh Scylla's gorillas when they played them on this map if, no it was vicious it was vicious they played vicious on this map and they yep. went this bomb site yep. yeah so yeah, i think this map favors those who have practiced it more and this bomb site sounds easy to attack on paper but I think what a lot of people forget that you can't just open up the double door instead of Visa and plant there because that's not the actual bomb site. You have to actually move your way into Tellers, actually plant the, the diffuser. Or what other teams try to do, they push in through the garage, try to take control of blue and move on in and take control of the bottom spiral. And that pretty much helps them out that way too. Lineup wise, I'm kind of confused as to why there's no pulse here. Although the, the castle makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure the, I agree totally with a legion pick here i mean legion's always like a good play right like he's annoying but i'm not sure if i agree with a pulse of sorry a legion over a pulse especially when you have downstairs control it's such a powerful place for pulse to play and he can just pulse out all of that area you have a huge amounts of intel from him kind of would like to see super on the pulse over the legion but i guess it's their strategy so we'll see how that goes down i think maybe he's playing it just for like holding that lobby area so they can't just push right across the west side as you were talking about right yeah like you mentioned earlier in the matchup with this with disrupt and organized chaos pulse is an absolutely monstrous operator to pick for holding consulate down no matter the bomb site because you can still play down beneath inside archives and pulse all the way up to the to the second floor yeah you can indeed pulse all the way and also just like repelling people as well but you have so much intel where the push is actually coming down and if there's no push coming there you know it's going to be coming into the opposite side so and tuffy's first. already making a move all the way through and he's already managed to make his way near blue bit of a round game going there <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> you got it you're dr cease <laughs> yeah kickstart better watch out <laughs> Well, CC Neptunes is going to be holding on above. This is a very, very spread out defense from Sonics, but no one has been picked just yet. Super still playing his Legion Mines around this area in the lobby, but oh, he's almost getting caught out. Oh, and there we go. He will go down instantly. Super is the first opening frag here as Kali does take him out. It's now a 4v5 as Stuffy moves all the way into this. He takes down Ghost, but instantly traded out by Goddess as the C4 is going to come out from her to confirm the kill. Apparently, it going to be a, now back to a 4v3, but Avian's going to frag off Carnage now 3v3. Kali at 20 HP as well as Avian. Neptunes finds another onto Euphoria. Basically the only attacker with full HP. He has to work through three more defenders alongside Kali with 34 seconds left to play. Goddess swings around and finds herself an absolute monstrous 2k onto Kali and Beastly. And Sonics will move on up 5 to 2. With the MPX as well, brilliant play from Goddess there to try and get this double kill, and she will do successfully. So, uh, do so successfully. The real tongue twisted that one. As we move into round number nine, Sonic's looking very, very, very good right now. And, and look at that, Avian is nine and four right now. He's been playing Capital and Castle. I mean, this man is the best UMP player in North America. I'm telling you right now. He gets. On, you're you're so going to disregard Canadian like that? Many, yeah. I will, because <laughs> I still think that Avi just gets away with 
way more stuff than Canadian does. That's so, true. The UMP stuff is just way, way good from Avian. But there we go. Super going to move through onto the Valkyrie. So much more concentration on Intel here as we go to a lobby press room. It's be Goddess who will be promoted to the dock. Yeah, I think you call her Goddess after that last play. Hell yeah. <laughs> last play she's been promoted. But I think actually it's why, why she's on dock is for the bulletproof. And she's not only like the main cam operator on Sonics. I'm interested yeah, to see true. where this bulletproof goes actually. It looks like she's going to start to establish some reinforcements upstairs and maybe retreat back downstairs with that bulletproof cam. But we'll see how it plays out for Sonics. I don't think we've seen her on dog play inside a lobby at least with the bulletproof cam. Have we? Um, I can't recall anything. You mean this season? Yeah. No, I don't think we have. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell like where stuff is going down, but... It's actually going to be a bulletproof cam upstairs instead. So a really, really heavy upstairs hole coming out from Sonic set, which does make a huge amount of sense. Yeah, God is opening up a corner of that window. It's a bit interesting, but, you know, Goddess has a big brain. And we'll, uh, I think it's more just to make catch someone plays. as they're repelling rather than allow them to hit the window, right? That's true. So Very as true. we go through into further round of nine, it's going to be the action phase here. And we'll see how Sonics managed to hold on. Ghost is going to go for the run out here, but doesn't get it. Does get the down, however, but instantly revived. So no harm, no foul, I suppose. Yeah, well, that's going to be a reset wasted away for Ghost. And he'll be at 75 HP now. I don't think anyone was on camps to warn Ghost about that. But Euphoria landing the opening frag onto Super. A Nitro Cell off the board. And one of the primary yeah. top fraggers being taken down. Yeah, that is a massive, massive pick for the attackers right now coming in. And him going down that early is also a little bit of the upstairs control now withered away. Uh, Got us still going to be up here. And uh, Ghost still holding on to the meeting room area. And repels are going to start coming down onto this connector area. Got us still going to be playing around. Very safe, but as I say, that Kali gonna pick up Goddess and Euphoric picks up Ghost as he rotates to try and come through. And Sonics have just been completely eliminated, says. This is not looking good for them at all. They're just gonna just try and dip the hell out of them. Ooh, what? Neptunes. Oh my god, what a shot from Neptunes. He takes out Euphoric, but instantly treasured by Carnage. However, it's gonna be all down to Avian on the site. In a my show, in a 1v4. Let's see if he can try and do anything here. The site push is going to start to come down. Uh, as there go the smokes onto the antechamber. They're even going to try and rotate through benches. You will get one to Tuffy. Let's see if you can get another one in the situation. The plant is still going to go down. Carnage with a pre fire. Takes out Avian. Our bad take from round number nine. Our bad looking absolutely monstrous that last round. Bringing it to a 5v3. 5v2, excuse me. Neptune's landing a very insane shot off the top of Yellow Stairs coming in through the top ropes. Lands a swanton bomb directly onto the head of Euphoria. And despite that, our bad managed to win their fourth round. And this is the most rounds that they've won in a matchup so far. And I think that that last match that we had with Disrupt and um, who was it? Organized Chaos? That was a barn burner. But this matchup is absolutely blowing everybody's minds out of the water. Definitely. So, round number 10 getting underway, and we'll see the 6 pick coming through from Beastly from Habana to Thermite. We've seen a lot of Vigil 6 picking, which is kind of interesting. But moving into round number 10, we will see a basement defense. Typically tends to be a little bit more defender sided than the other sites. Yeah. That's very true. Basement. That, that That's very true. Um, A buck coming out from Tuffy. Last time they came here. Or our bad managed to dismantle the defense that came around for Sonics, and Tuffy went absolutely massive, finding I think I believe it was a 3K if I'm not mistaken, and yeah. landing a very nice shot from Go onto Ghost through the wall inside a cafeteria. They managed to play it out how they did the last time that they came through. We could see ourselves at a 5-5 split. We could, which means this game will go the distance, which I think would be a big, big surprise to. Pretty much everyone watching this, you would look into this and see the Sonics are pretty much the favorites to take this, and we said it ourselves going earlier, but our battle put up a very decent fight so far, and I don't know, they've managed to get a lot of opening kills, and that tends to be what wins you rounds more than anything, right? 
The yeah. same mute jam is going down that we saw earlier on Consulate as well about uh, denying these rotates with yeah. drones. Hopefully the mute bug doesn't happen again. Hopefully. <laughs> Don't jinx it. And already the attack, I believe it's going to be starting to come in through the admin side, if I'm not mistaken. Already the capital coming out from Kali was situated outside of Yellow Stairs with Avian watching ever so tightly from the black car. Yeah, I think Neptune and Super will be upstairs again on the duo room. It's Sorry. a very aggressive position for Avian to be playing, but he's safe there for now. As we are seeing the room clear slowly but sh slowly but surely coming in there. But Neptunes is going to go down on a sliver of HP. Kali, not going to lose that fight this time, is going to take it. Now goes Neptunes so early on. That's already a visual down, but I just don't understand. Why is there a Capital entering? Like, I don't I don't think that's a good time to start entering. Like You're losing a huge amount of utility if you lose that Capital. It's exactly why they lost the last time they attacked it. It could just well, be no, no, the no, strategy. they didn't lose, but like they almost lost because they didn't have a capital yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. stuff from that. Is Super going to make the smart rotation back downstairs into sight and the thermite coming out from Beastly? It's going to open up the garage panels. I'm not exactly too sure. I think it's on the south side, but Super already rotating up the Beast's stairs. And if no one on our bat is w aware of it, it's actually going to be Carnage on Repel, so he could catch Super on a rotate. Yeah, he's holding it down quite well. It's going to be a 5v4 situation. Super still having control of the upstairs, however. But it's not going to do him too well. He kind of needs to make a play sooner rather than later. But I think he's just waiting for a call to come out that the execute is actually starting to go down. But they're so aware that he's up here still. Because, yeah, as you said, Carnage is just waiting for that rotate to come through. Waiting to pick him up on it. So Super has to drop the hatch if he wants to make anything happen. Goddess still playing around to the pipes on the security hall. And seeing what she could do is flashes, bangs are going to come through into the backside. Microcam oh, goes down. No. They go to the pre-fire, but there we go. That's unfortunate. Ghost is going to go down, but not out just yet. BC goes for the plant of the diffuser as Carnage picks up Super on the rotate. Now with 3v5, well, 2v5 as Ghost is down. The plant goes down successfully. Ooh, Kali, Kali picks up Avian. Great shot from him. It's all down to Goddess in a 1v5 with the retake. To see if she can try and revive her teammate to try and bring it into a 2v5, but this is still not looking good either way. She will pick up Ghost. But it's now a 2v5, and they don't really have any control as the plant has gone down. So they're starting to do its work. And Stuffy is still holding from above through antechamber, and the pings are starting to come out. Goddess trying to push up where she can, but no, she's going to go down. Ghost goes down, and there we go. Our bad at take round number 10, and we are going to go to distance. This our bad looks like a completely brand new team from what we saw throughout the qualifier playoffs and in the first playday matchup. I. I honestly don't even recognize who this team is anymore. They've completely changed the second well, matchup. This uh, this team is a Challenge League team. I really thought you'd be aware of this team because we just <laughs> cast them as a Maki. I think you'd recognize them from earlier. Get the hats there now. But what I'm saying is they've completely oh, changed the right. way that they've yeah, played. Yeah, my bad. My yeah. Bad. <laughs> my so, bad, our bad. <laughs> my bad. No pun intended. We'll go through into round number 11. And We'll see how it goes down. Archives tell us <laughs> defense going down yet again for Sonics. This was a very weird defense last time, but it actually did go very well for them. Yeah. That's also the second time downstairs where Sonics has lost in the garage. The last time we were here, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was Sonics that won it, right? Yeah. They win it with a two piece at the end from Goddess. That's right. Goddess just went absolutely massive. With the MPX. Yeah, she got a 3k as Valkyrie overall in that round. So, really <laughs> well paid from her. We'll see how it goes down as we move into round number 11. And, uh, yeah. Um, like, last time, though, there was a really quick entry into the site coming out from the attack. And again, we're seeing the exact same strategy coming out with Super on the Legion. But last time he played this, I mean, he was wasting a bit of time in this kind of spiral area. But... He died like, instantly. I mean, he's not really you're not wasting time, really, if you're dying that yeah. early. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he still got think that out by Cali. The pulse would be better here, but I can understand the Legion pick. Yeah, the Legion's more so, I guess, audio information compared to the visual information coming out from the pulse. But, you know, it's uh, Sonic Strat, the way that they want to work with. It's more comfortable for them to utilize it that way. I'm not exactly too sure if Super is comfortable on the pulse pick. But he's a lot more comfortable with the lesion, so I think that's one way to look at it. It is one way to look at it, but we are going to move through 
into round number 11. And uh, yeah, we're seeing the Xen, like the exact same take as well, where they come through garage, they take control of here. And this is a lot of what you were talking about right now. This is kind of an easy way to push this site out. Or you're setting up a 200 IQ claymore there. So if anyone from Sonics, be it Super or maybe even Ghost or, or Neptunes, come around with the shotguns and blast up in that hatch, they could be met with a pretty nasty claymore on the drop down. But already we've wasted a minute and not a whole lot of action has happened. Kelly rotating around from the spawn. And Neptune situated all the way upstairs inside of Admin. I mean, he did this last time. They were going for a really, really, really heavy upstairs hold. And it actually worked out quite well for them in the end. So I'm not completely against it. But it, it definitely is interesting coming through from them. But... There's a lot of control already being taken in here on this side. Security room under the control as well. As Tuffy just runs his way all the way down. But Kali's going to be the first to take here. But Tuffy does manage to pick up Goddess. Immediately gets control of the site as well. As it goes all the way in. But Ghost will shut it down from happening. This way, Ghost will refry Goddess rather than the other way around this time. As uh, Euphoria has made his way into the site as well. But there we go. Ghost picks up Beastly. Euphoria will shut down Neptune as he tries to rotate all the way down. But Ghost with a 3k in the shotgun. Euphoria goes down. It's uh, all into the hands of Carnage. But in the words of Easily, this is probably the best player he's ever seen in his life. So hopefully he'll be able to clutch out the 3v1. He's holding it down. Super waiting for that rotate to come down. He's going to ping it out. He doesn't know that someone is there. He goes for the pre-fire. Can't quite win the fight, but there we go with a headshot. Super takes down Carnage. And Sonics at least confirmed the draw, but moves to match point either way. Super's the better player. <laughs> Apparently so. Unfortunate for easily his analysis there. It's going to be wrong this time around. And yeah, Sonics confirming the tie at least. And yet again, I think Consulate's the match, the, the, the map that we need to go to for all the barn burners because... The past three times that we've casted Consulate, it's gone the distance every single time. I'd be really annoyed if this ends in a draw, because <laughs> I really wanted to do an interview, but we'll see how it gets down as we do move we'll into a goes. cafeteria and garage defense. So far, this has been a pretty terrible defense from Sonics. Yeah. Third time's a charm, maybe? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> we now seen the Kyad being brought, which is a definitely like mix up in strategy i think sonic's always played their best when they're adapting and they're not just doing the same thing all the time that's true and we also see neptunes switching over to the pulse this time around so a lot of information is going to be utilized for sonics right now i really wish that cali like you mentioned earlier isn't the primary entry that comes in through but that's just the way that our bad works and if it works it, it it's proving to be great in their favor if it doesn't you really hate to see it because that's a ton of utility just wasted away and just gone off the board. Yeah, tons of utility just wasted away there. But uh, it's been pretty much the same lineup from our bad almost every single round as well. So, I mean, there hasn't really been huge amounts of adaptation coming out from either side. And this is the first bit we come. But as you said, plenty more utility and plenty more kind of... Um, information as well coming up in the defense which i think is kind of the name of the game right also just a quick update from stream b unfortunately the last game between Scylla's gorillas and elevate ended in a tie so we love the ties today <laughs> with three yeah. ties already it might be a I, guess, <laughs> I guess you could call today's date uh tie day <laughs> you call the, the matches have been going on <laughs> there we go drones are gonna start to come out as we move into the very final round of this intense matchup. Pings are going to be coming out from Carnage. And you're spotting out where the Maestro cams are. As the Pulse is slowly doing its work. Super still playing pretty aggressively around the pipes area to see what he can do. But this is kind of slow progress coming out from the attack. The MPs are going to go down. That should be able to get rid of that Electro Claw. That's going to be the last one that was available from Super. He's going to be holding down a very, very, very tight angle. And yeah, there we go. There's the thermite gone down. Potentially. But we can't get the drone. There we go. <laughs> Having a bit of difficulty shooting off that drone, but already a minute 45 left into the round. And this is do or die enough for our bad if they want to walk away with at least one point for play days to buck. Tuffy will start to work away on that piano floor, but Euphoria going for a peek, taking down the evil eye. It's looking really well right now, but half the round left to play out. Not a, too much action happening. 
Not too much action happening yet as Euphoria tries to make his way through onto this garage breach. But it's still a 5v5 and there's still a little bit of utility left available for the defense to try and hold out here. And drones are going to start to come out from the attack from Euphoria especially and just seeing exactly what they can do. There's still actually a lot of utility available from the attack as well. They've still got three flashbangs from the Thermite and one of them goes out. We've still got one Zofia charge and one impact left remaining from Euphoria. Neptune's, however, still on a flank. Hasn't been picked yet. And this could be actually really good for him to go with this flank. But Kali's still holding it down on that flank watch. Still has full utility up himself as well. So, at, like, at some point, he's going to have to rotate and put that utility down if they want to go for that push. At which point, that flank can come down from Neptune's. But... 40 seconds left to go on the clock, and they really have to try and go for their push right now. And there we go. Kali is going to pick up Neptune just a little bit too early on that flank. And Kali picks up another one. There goes Ka there goes Super, sorry, as Euphoria picks up one to Goddess. And now it's a 2v5. 2v4 as Kali is actually injured out of all of that. But they're starting to run out all of that time. No remote gas grenades left remaining on the clock from Ghost as Amy moves all the way up. He does have a nitro. He has the opportunity to deny this plant going down. He's going to shoot down Tofi. Oh my god, it's all down to Amy. And he picks up another one. There goes Kali. Can pick up another one. He does. Oh my god, Amy with the 3k. He's desperately trying to find another. Desperately holding off. But no, Carnage is going to refrag him. Avian goes down as we GG well played. As this game ends in a draw between Arbad and Sykes. No interview for you, Sternab. Unfortunate, Unfortunate, brother. And wow, I'm absolutely baffled at how amazing our bad managed to play against Sonics, the number one favorite in the season so far. They look like a completely different team. I, I, I mean, I'm saying it again, but you know, our 